Hello everybody, in this Rhino Grasshopper video demo, I would like to show how we can create a definition that can be used to parametrically modify and generate polyhedron based designs such as the ones that are being shown on screen. Okay, let's start. The first thing we need to do is to install a plugin called Rhino Polyhedra which we can do so by using the package manager. So at the command prompt, I'm going to type package manager to fire it up. And then at the search section, I'm going to type polyhedra. And Rhino Polyhedra expansion is the plugin that needs to be installed. So I'm going to select it and click install. Once the program has been downloaded and installed, we need to restart Rhino in order to get the plugin to work. So I'm going to click OK and restart Rhino. OK, Rhino restarted. You'll notice that we have an additional toolbar with cool looking icons. Basically, this polyhedron or rather its associated command in Grasshopper is what we need to employ for our definition. Okay, so um, now let's head over to Grasshopper. And you'll notice that if you go to the Mesh tab, we got a new set of toolbars called Polyhedron. Okay, mm, what to do now, maybe let's change this to the perspective. And let's proceed to create the definition. As mentioned, the first thing I need to put is the polyhedron. Okay, so I'm going to put the polyhedron here. And we need to specify the name for the type of polyhedron. And to be honest, the names are quite difficult to understand, and I'm not a rocket scientist. So, what I'm going to do is to click on this icon to help me to find the, the names for. The various type of forms. Okay, you notice that there are tons of different type of forms that can be generated from this uh, polyhedron command. So um, let's go for the chamfered type of polyhedron. Let's look at this stuff. Uh, let's go for this. Okay, chamfered. Dodecahedron. Sorry, I suck at pronouncing this. So, uh, let's go for this. I'm going to click the cancel. So, what I need to do is to put a panel with that particular name and connect it to this uh, name input. So, let's put a panel and type in that terminology. Uh, chamfered so the uh, he drawn okay. In, I hope I'm getting it right. Okay, so let's connect here. Uh, yeah, we got this form. Okay, so we can use the scale input to change the size of our base object. So let me just put a slider here. I think this is a bit too big. Let's scale it down. Something like that. Okay. Okay. Now we can proceed to create the the individual um instances on the basis okay, of the polyhedron. With that, we need to extract the information from the meshes output. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is to find the center of each mesh. To do that, we can type the area, put in an area component. Basically, we need to get the centroid, okay, which will be the center for each of these uh, mesh face. We're going to plug this here, and you notice that, yeah. 
we have the center being the centroid okay so next thing i want to do is to scale this um, mesh and go to type of scale plug this geometry okay with the meshes output okay and then the center will need to be the central okay so click on this and you notice that yep we got our individual polygons being centered about the centroids okay um now let's put a scale factor over here let's have something like from zero to say two. okay and let's have floating points i think two decimal place will do for me here and you notice that now i should be able to control the size of these meshes okay. so now once it's done the next thing i need to do is to move these meshes away from the individual faces to do that we can use another scale component but this time around the center will not be the individual centers of the meshes instead you will be the center of the viewport which is here at zero comma zero comma zero okay so what i'm going to do is put another scale component plug like this uh geometry output to the geometry input and we leave the center as it is because the default center in this case here is zero comma zero comma zero okay and then the scale factor we can plug another number slider to it okay so just modify from the existing one you notice that if i were to move out something like that we'll be able to get something that is uh, away from the design we change this something like that okay so we can like move it up to maximum of uh unit three okay and we can use this uh, first scale component slider to change the size of that uh, that resultant meshes. Okay. Now I need to break another of uh, this set of uh, meshes away from from the base uh, faces. So maybe somewhere around here and we basically just have to repeat this process okay so what we're going to do is uh put another scale plug this here okay and the center i guess we can um use this as the origin center and then put another of these uh, slider here plug it here now you can set it like further away however i also want to be able to scale this thing and let's repeat what we did just by putting an area so that you can get the the central so plug this to this and you can see that we are getting like the the center of this and basically we need to do another scaling now we need to scale this and the center being the central the new centroids and let's put another slider i reckon it should be something similar to this so let me just copy this Okay, plug this here. Okay, you notice now 
I can scale this. Okay. So there are a set of um measures that I need to uh derive boundary curves from to create our resultant um instances over here. Okay, and to extract that edge curves we can use the component called base boundaries okay base boundaries and there are a handful of in fact there are just three sets of meshes that we need to extract the base boundaries so let me just um duplicate three sets okay the first set is from the original mesh okay first set is from the original mesh so it's going to plug this here and you notice that we got our original mesh uh, base boundary. And then the second set will be this second group of mesh faces that have been moved away from the base meshes and scaled as well. So this is the second set that we need to extract base boundary. So I'm going to connect this here okay and now the last set will be this set which is another set that has been scaled and we move away from the center so let's connect this here and now we have three sets of base boundaries which we can uh, use for lofting purposes, so I'm going to put a lot, plug them in sequence. Pressing and holding a shift key, plug them in sequence into the curves input, and yeah, we got our curves. Okay, to make it easier for us to see what's going on here, what I'm going to do is go to display and put in a custom preview, connect this here and you can see you yeah, are able to see the form better uh, let's, let's, let's just hide the preview for the, the stuff that we don't want to see so basically uh, stops okay. okay so we got something like that you can see so you can see it's not that difficult to create the shape the last thing we need to do is just to cover this and we can use the last uh, set of face boundary that was created namely this this set here to create a surface i reckon we can use something like boundary surface surface okay create the surface let's see whether it works yeah can you see yeah we, we we got this so i'm going to connect this Pressing holy shift key to the custom preview as well. And yeah, we, we, we got this this stuff here. We just add the preview. Yeah, so we got this kind of form. And by playing with the number sliders, we will be able to parametrically control the resultant form. Okay, this first set will be used to control this first slider will be used to control the size. And the subsequent sliders can be used to control the shape of the instances, individual instances. It's something like that. Okay, so we can create like pretty interesting variants just by playing the number sliders. Now this thing looks like a delicious fruit that can be found in South Asia, a durian. With that, I come to the end of this demo. See you. Bye.